Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger. Welcome to Dare to Dream. Pleasure to have you here today. And at the top of the show, I'll just share that I'm going to be featuring Arcturus Ra. He is a star seed ambassador. Renee, aka Arcturus Ra, awakened to his purpose. And he shares his personal activation, his remembrance of being an Arcturian scientist and Starfleet commander. Dare to Dream won the COVR Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show. Welp Magazine named Dare to Dream one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. It's high ranking under self-improvement in Apple Podcasts and won three Talk Radio Positive Change Awards. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here in Access Consciousness. They do energy work out in the world. You can find them at Dr. Dane here, H E E R. Com. I'm Debbie Dashinger, media visibility expert, and I teach you how to write your book. Take it from inception to published. I also have a company that takes your book to a guaranteed international bestseller. And finally, I show you how to be interviewed on radio and podcast. I am a boutique publicist for a few spiritual messengers, so I know this business really well. And if you'd like to learn how you can start to shine your light and tell your message way more visibly, way more boldly, and attract the tribe that is yours to learn from you, please accept my gift. I'm giving out templates and videos of how to do all of these processes. Go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R dot com slash gift. My guest, Arcturus Ra, holds a master's degree in electrical engineering and computer technologies. He's self-taught in photon fusion and bioresonance devices. Ra had paranormal experience since a toddler, and from the age of 11, he studied the mysteries of the universe, UFOs, Yeti, Loch Ness, fairy folk, ghosts, and how to expand consciousness. Ra is an experiencer, had Esasani walking with him, and has been taken multiple times. His cosmic family is from the Arcturian Northern Hemisphere Boots constellation. And to this day, Arcturus has many encounters with positive ET beings, receiving downloads from them and turning those into technology. To learn more about him, go to ra-key.com. It's ra-key.com. And with that, I welcome Arcturus Ra to Dare to Dream. It's so great to have you here. I had it muted, so now we're back. Okay, so you hear me, yeah? I hear you great. Good, yep. Good. Welcome, welcome. Good. You know, something I really loved in your bio is the fact that you said you continue to have encounters mm -hmm. and that they are positive yeah. ET experiences. I've only had positive ET experiences. Yeah. And I often feel like that's a message of hope for people yeah. to hear um, and an important reality for people to hear. Well, I'm excited for my contacts all the time mm. and because I get uh, expanded in knowledge. And I realized in this great experiment, Earth is uh, how fragile consciousness is. So it's not like you become a super, super human being the next day. There are levels of a uh, filter and storyline that play out, that must play out for us uh, to evolve. And that's very fragile. You know, Can you talk you're... about how your contact encounters are experienced? Are they when you're waking up? Are they when you're sleeping? Are they, how do they it... occur? They, they they can occur in 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 a waking state but they leave a residue of a dreamscape they do that mm -hmm. to protect our consciousness mm -hmm. so they are pun was a case where a guy was abducted and he felt it was all dreamy and he walked through the wall and that that gave me confirmation of how my stuff takes place and he came back to his bed and in the morning he saw the uh, footprints from the dirt from the soil from outside when it was rainy that night leading to his bed so he physically walked but to him it was a dream mm -hmm. 
So what they what the uh the extra dimensionals I would say can do is they can slide in and out of reality by uh, influencing segments of how we are in time because time itself is a consciousness which is a whole nother other topic which can go i don't know seven day seminar where they have to actually come in there make agreeable edits get you out educate you and bring you back into an agreeable edit so it's kind of seamless to you and so may i ask who specifically you have these interactions with so i uh, i i know i have pleiadians talking with me that i don't have a visual reference for I know Lyrans are in contact uh, on a scientific, uh, uh, um, let's say, you know, data transfer. And I know that they're cat beings because I was told I was a cat being once too, a lion. I was a male. And um, Sasani is, I've seen, they kind of look cute. They're like little Buddha babies. <laughs> they have very symmetric faces, you know, they're very curious. And they walk with you and they're interested in how you evolve, evolve your consciousness, how you store thoughts, how people are treating you and how the, the how you processing that. So they're, all, they're always like curious little kids that actually watch you. Great type, but you know, it's, you know, I, I want to step away from the hideous images of, of the, you know, the, the gray always like with the black eyes and, and, and so hideous. They uh, also great type that I have encountered were not hideous. And they were silver, but the gray, the gray type body, you know, the typical oval shaped head, uh, almond shaped black eyes. Uh, I've seen them also in blue. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if these are suits. These are body suits for dimensional travel, like kind of VR for them to come here. Yeah. So that they don't have to travel the distance, the distance, because the thing is, if you are an evolved species, you have to think effectively. So do you really have to be in physical form to come here to explore consciousness or can you come in uh, uh, through projection? Like Arcturians, they do it through projections. They don't have to be in physical form. They can project themselves here, even with a ship. This can all be an entire projection. Explore this here, project in and project out. That's why the military, I mean, sometimes, you know, I have to uh, smile at those whistleblowers. They, they still don't understand. This is interdimensional quantum tunneling and projection, it, it's not like you're chasing an object that you can see, and and it's and, it, and this object comes from a world that that's not based on physics that you know. So of course, it's a very confusing how they blip in and blip out. So to them, it's like um, a computer game where you have like a computer grid, and you have an assigned quadrant, and you project your image into that quadrant, whatever avatar you choose, whatever system settings you know. Look at look at PlayStation games. We're, we're building actually simulation worlds now we're building open worlds now disney has now announced that they have an omnidirectional floor that you can walk on in a vr game meaning you can walk in one place they have a lot of marbles under you change directions run but you're actually never moving it's the floor that's moving oh wow huh. so so we can cre create the illusion that we're in actually to the point where i think at some point you won't be able to distinguish between at the next simulation we create or the one that we're in. But I think we will wake up to the fact that that this is, these are all emula uh, emulations and simulations and different distortions and level of consciousness as we expand and evolve in the system. Got it. <laughs> also, Let I recommend... Ask... Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, so uh, when you activate contact and leave fear aside and everything that happens because your oversoul has agreed to this experience level, whatever, whatever it is, however... Horrible that may sound. You have agreed to this experience to integrate that to uh, help evolve consciousness, and that actually educates the mind. It makes yeah. you smart. Yeah. Well, you've had experience since you were a toddler. Paranormal yeah. experiences yeah. with the other side. Can you talk about what happened when you were young? So, um, since I was little, I always had visitors in my room but the overwhelming factors was was not just ets elves gnomes fairy folk everything in my room so uh, as a four-year-old i was paranoid to go to sleep because I, I heard them all i was just open so i had to over the years develop a system to shut it down and uh not let every everything in so much and uh one encounter was uh yeah 
horrible because you know we're not educated with that with that stuff. Uh, there, there, there's still a lack of education in how do you handle other dimensional contact, where they, you know, even even the military with their specialists, they shouldn't get these these silly and government trained and and remote control masters and all that stuff or, or remote view. They need to get sensitives and psychics to the job that can feel what's going on. They can give you an idea. They can tell you what's allowed or what's not allowed. So, so what happened that was so scary for you? So, okay, so thank you for bringing me back because I tend to drift. I'm a little bit of a mad scientist. Triple Aquarius, Scorpio rising, like insanity. Whoa. Next door. Uh, That's whoa. a lot. Yeah. That's a, no wonder you create like you do. Got it. Okay, so back yeah. to you were young. Okay, so I'm in a car. An extraterrestrial appears out of nowhere in the seat next to me. My mom's driving on the highway and I'm trying to get out the car. I'm freaking out because I can't I can't understand how this takes place. So it's so abrupt in my reality. I know the familiar, but I'm shocked a bit. So I'm, you know, trying to climb out the window. My mom's doing 60 miles an hour. Truck behind us, he sees me struggling in the in the door, going, you know, they they can't see what I'm seeing. My mom's not aware how in danger I am and realizes that I'm kind of like halfway out the car while she's on the highway. And this big truck driver just slows down so no oncoming traffic will run into me should I fall out. Crazy situation. My mom slows down, shocked the bits. The truck driver and Angel, you know, make sure that like her has her had literally had her back clear so nothing can can, can approach on the highway. And uh, the being disappeared. So I had to figure out the way the when they, when they would come in because a lot of those are amoral. They don't know, hey, there's time and the human vessel needs sleep. We need to rest. Uh, there are emotions on a different level here where we're still working on a sacral chakra. We're still building that out. You know, Earth was in the beginning orange. Now Earth, Earth has to like make that jump to go through the heart and throat directly go blue like as we going 5d so 5d is accessible but earth is not how do you say not seen by all as 5d so basically that was the encounter that was so scary where they, they come in bop bop and i'm like yo dude you gotta find a way to manage to come in where i can see you coming and i can accept your existence and then communication can be established and we have um, conditioning in us. I don't know if that's uh, Niburian, Draconian, Anunnakian slave pre-programming by genetics. We are still working on that. Um, that you, you flip out when they come. I heard an interview with, I don't know if you heard of the name Paula Harris. Yeah, of course. Yep. She said she was in Mount Shasta and she said, I wasn't doing well. They came from the sky. You know, correct me if I'm wrong. 40, 50 yards from her waving and she couldn't handle it. That's our programming. That's our resistance to not let what is our parents actually come in. And she panicked and flipped out. And many people still is, yeah, you're all eager for contact for contact, but you have to really, 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 really have your isht together mentally, spiritually, mind, body, and soul to receive the contact. And then if you're on a level and people have been on those levels with other dimensional beings, uh, like they say, Madame Blavatsky, um, she had uh, ascended masters appear and sit on a couch and talk with her. You have to have a consciousness to handle that. you know. Yeah, I agree with you. And yeah. why is it that you believe that you're a walk-in? How do you, like when That's you say- It's a good question because I, I call myself actually- I mean, I have the experience of a typical walk-in, but I think I was inserted in the womb. And some people say that's a crawl-in. <laughs> Funny. That makes sense. Here's that's the thing. Cute. Okay, here's my story. Okay. I, my mom was pregnant with me. We'll give you a little spooky tale, and I have mm -hmm. all the evidence. So, so some people that are out there, they still say, I, I even meet esoterics that like, they say, Ra, you're too far out for me. Uh, let's go. Let's go far. Let's travel with all there is, because the most fantastic thing is the truth. So my mom pregnant with me. I'm a military child. My father was in the service. You know, we went shopping at the base. Some of you kids or, la or later folks know how, 
how that life is in Germany growing up bilingual. So my mom pregnant with me in the car in Frankfurt. And this is a very fateful and very, I mean, the, syn the synchronicity within the synchronicity is already so mind blowing every time I explain it. It, it. it took me some time to figure this out in my life. So my mom pregnant with me, a truck driver misses a stop sign, rams my mom in the side, pregnant with me, my father dies, uh, my older brother died, my mom is put into an artificial coma, they thinking C-section to save me. Okay, that's the drama. And a healer said that I have a pre- birth trauma that I died in my mother's womb. And somehow my heart came back. And I think that my cosmic family assisted that. They turned it back on. So maybe that soul was switched right then and there. And I was put in. And then my life was fantastic, but fantastically hidden also because I didn't know how to turn those systems on correctly till I was 31. So Interestingly, my grandma, when she was alive, and I think she was an Arcturian, she gave me a book. And interesting how you did your research. It's really down to the point with the Loch Ness and, and Yeti and Bigfoot. I know about Bigfoot since I was 11. I'm 54 now. So um, it's uh, when that book landed on the table, a German book, it was called um, Mysterium, Mysterium des Universums, uh, Mysteries of the Universe. And it had the Loch Ness monster, like the famous picture from the 70s, UFOs, uh, Mayan calendar, un unknown cultures, uh, Easter Islands, the whole pre-astronaut theory, everything in this one book. And all my bells started ringing, you know? All my systems came on and I was like, okay, I gotta follow that path. Something tells me it's, it's like living at a, a dualistic, almost, not schizophrenic, but multi-phrenic life where you question life and you're like with one foot in a spiritual one, with the other foot you're in this realm and you're in between and some people think you're crazy. And <laughs> Mind you, in Germany in the 70s and the 80s, you don't talk about that stuff. Crystals, healing, energies, what's wrong with you? Pardon me, because we have sure. this glitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's been a little bit under the weather, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's so great stuff. you're here anyway. Yeah, and I can tell people it's, it's not any virus going on. Like when Earth gets jolted with electrical impulses, we get stressed. And this is this, this is the symptomology that, that responds to it. And our planet got hit last week. Again, flooding in San Diego on the 22nd. It's insane what I saw. It's just really like unbelievable. And a lot of people, like a pandemic, you know, like where people we got irritated. So we, we get into that later. So back to the experience is me my mom in an in a artificial coma they bring her out the coma she gives birth to me in that hospital a mysterious nun that was dressed like she's not from that timeline comes into my mother's room and looks at her and says the child will be fine and leaves and my mom asks nobody has seen that nun see that there's no in that hospital no nuns and, and and pastors run around there on a regular that's not wasn't the case so I think it was probably an ET, aka angel. I think many angels are ET. We have a lot, a lot of mythological unentanglements to, to, uh, to, to do to, to see what's what. And then my mom knew I would be fine. And then something uncanny, when I was in my late 20s, I wanted to look at my father's death certificate just because I had a hunch. I had no idea why and what. And... As people know, there is a signature on the lower bottom, on the right, on the line. You know, it's the same thing in a fact of the equipment is faulty, it's dead, and then it's signed off, and then, you know, so it's signed by the doc. And in the middle of that piece of paper, it said Ra. Typewriter, you know, like hand like these, you know, when back in the days, you know, it was really like this, not computerized. Somebody put those two initials in there, and these are not the doctor's initials. So somebody must have known that I would come. 
and left a sign. Whoever typed that out, which I could never find or track down. And you had already been going by the name Arcturus Ra before you saw that? Um, no, that came later. That came later. I, I saw that and I put, put it, gave it no mind. It actually said Ra 13 and 13 is the highest tone as in, in the Mayan calendar, as in mystical, magical. And a lot of activations are um, associated with that. And, you know, and I went back to, it's like, it was that what I read? And I'm like, okay, that that explains why Arcturus Ra. And Arcturus Ra, people are like, um, you know, a funny story. And they go, like, oh, Ra, are you the sun god? And I'm like, no, I'm part of a collective. A group that was of the Ra. And um, I tell people, like, you have a Gmail account that doesn't make you Google. But you're part of the Gmail collective. And that is how we were of the Ra, a priesthood. Intergalactic priesthood came here, helped steward this planet, educate humans. We were in extraterrestrial form. We came here before. It took me some time to activate my brain. It's kind of like you come here on Earth damaged. And then you have to do what I call angelic reverse engineering. Like really getting into medicine to get original cosmic memory back to figure out, like, how did I come here? What's my purpose? Why am I here? And like people say karma, dharma, basically. Karma is just when you're not doing your job. And dharma is just when you're doing your job. I love that. Very, very simple. Dharma is, hey, Ra, you are actually of the Ra Collective. Da, 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 and you're here to do da, 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 da. And now I'm doing it. Yeah. That's where your so, faith comes in, you know? I want to I wanna dive into this. So first of all, God bless your grandma, right? We got to yeah. love grandparents. They're the greatest oh, yeah. in the oh, world. Yeah. She gives you this amazing book. Somehow she's tapped in. So, and I also want to connect this with something you spoke about earlier and are speaking about now. So it's something that still fascinates me. And that is this Anunnaki dilemma. I, so I, I just want to say, can we start with human history yeah. and then add in the Anunnaki with details on what then happened to the human DNA? So a few things I found out and I tell people like you have to be like blind to, to not see what's in front of you. So there was there are several doctors that found out that we have genetically been modified. Right. One was Dr. Hayflick. He called he found what he's called the Hayflick switch. Read on it, Google it, Wikipedia. Hayflick switch. Um, with uh, us aging, he figured out it's an artificial insert. We also figured out, interestingly, that cancer cells are immortal. The destructive counterpart to us is important immortal. And 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 that can grow on as long as it has you know organisms organism to feed on. There's no aging going on. That was us in the original timeline. I must also. I mean, it's it's a controversial topic, and people want to want to want to want to scream about it. But uh, respect to my man Ishmael Perez. I interviewed him. This will be shortly up on my channel, where. You have to understand, Anunnaki means from heaven they came and the relation to the uh, uh, Aku or Aki, the, uh, the, the, the uh, draconian race, and the Anu, the kind of heavenly race. So we are, we are a mixture, basically. We're kind of like angels with like dragon feet, if you will. <laughs> but we're here to heal that. We are those, all of us are these hybrids because we have to heal this conflict. <laughs> this is the experiment here for us to, what if you bring um, a fallen consciousness with unfallen consciousness together on a, on a platform that is unfathomable. Like you, can, you cannot understand the range of that experience, experience and experiment together. And can we bring the fallen ones back home? Basically. So do you believe, is. so I we'll start with this. Do you believe yeah. that the Anunnaki were having yes. a catastrophe on their yes. planet Yes. and they chose earth to live to partly for living here and partly yeah, yeah. because they wanted to mine. Yeah, they were mining gold. Uh, look at that funny movie, Aliens. Is it cowboy? Cowboys and Aliens. When you always think cowboys and Indians, this is called, and it's, and, 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 it, and it's produced by Spielberg, mind you. These movies are not blah. has to do with some reptilians there, and another extraterrestrial in human form, but an other dimensional tracking them. And cowboys and natives having to work together. 
to bring abundance to the planet and heal that they're being used and being controlled. So highly recommend just this is a disclosure movie, Cowboys and Aliens. Very interesting. So Anunnaki from Heaven They Came. Um, same thing as Elohim, a uh, shining ones. Yeah. Not all are fallen. There was a fraction of Elohim that fell that doesn't make all the Elohim bad. There was a disagreement in command. And the Bible talks about it. And that's when God, you know, when, when the Most High, which I think was the, the, the one in command, had a dispute. And I think this was Enlil. So the God of the Bible is Enlil, make no mistake, because first there was the word and the word was with God. That means in Sumerian, Lord of Command and Lord of Command was Enlil. Lord of the air was Enki. Aquaman is Enki. Aquaman is also Poseidon. And this was so cursed that they took the trident and gave the trident the devil. It's all mixed. We're all mixed up. We all, we all have to have to learn the clues. So in the Bible, you're basically praying the Enlil, not God. The original storyline for you is to actually to not pray to and worship anything outside of yourself. And when you channel, your main contact is your oversoul. Then everything else. And everything else in this process while you're here is here to serve you. Everything. Mm. You are here in physical form. You have rites of passage. That's a very high royal right. Like Bashar said, you're on earth. You're worthy. Now use it wise. Mm -hmm. So, Anunnaki, Neburian. How do you say? Like we are an offspring basically of the Anunnaki, Neburian, Adamites. We are the offspring genetically. And they altered us. <clears throat> they changed our pigmentation. They changed our genetics over and over. And there's science that can document since Lucy, we've been altered 56 times or something. Can you imagine? We're not natural evolution. How do we know that? When people say we're for monkeys, we've never been for monkeys. We've been mixed with monkeys. Hence, we have uh, rhesus negative and rhesus positive. People don't know what that means. If you're rhesus negative, that means you have no monkey DNA in you. If you're rhesus positive, that means partially you you were you were bred with the primitive hominids on this planet in your ancestral lineage. And if you do DNA tests, you'll see that. You know. Yeah, I, so I've so had DNA and chromosome tests, and the the chromosome was everything. What I discovered then made so much sense. But I want to go back to the Anunnaki. Yes, and so. When they changed us so that we would become labor. Yeah. Uh, so is it your understanding that they took our 12 strand DNA yeah. and changed that to two strand DNA, yes. even though we are a self will run planet and people? Yes. Yeah. Well, it's a free will planet, but the, the problem with free will is free will is not divine will. The right and just use of will is knowing what divine will is. And free will is, you know, look, look, look at the planet. Look at look at the wars going on. I mean, it's much better than it used to be. But it's like free will means like I can do what I want to do, no matter the consequence, no matter the awareness or whatever comes to me, you know, I pay the price. Now, divine will means you know, having like people not having near-death experience, people crossing over, people coming back, people saying like, no, there is a total sum. There's a bill coming for what you're doing. And you have to create that so 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 you may learn. So wh whoever is in power, and people have to understand that, whoever runs law in an unnatural way from these draconian times, we're still under that, you know, which is, I'm just giving you a little inkling here. There's, there's two things in the US, there's constitutional law and there's maritime law. We still don't understand that, that there's an original law that was designed for us to help us, to protect us, to give us trust funds and feed us. And that's not what's happening. We're being taxed and our taxes being taxed. So this is all going back to the draconians in power saying, yo, this our turf here. These are our ships and you're on our turf and you pay what we say you pay because we have the technology and upper hand over you. And so we're still under that spell and we're still dissolving that spell from here to the Roman river. Mark my words. 
this is deep. This is very, very deep. And I'm getting chills every time I say that, and people know that. And this must be dissolved by hand by high ultra terrestrial decree. And the ultra terrestrials are not even playing that game and Lil Enki and all of that stuff. That's lower echelon. There's an echelon, there's an echelon over that where we are past this dualistic battle and combat. So while people also, and I'll say this lightly, want to worship Enki as the savior and he's going to save the planet once again, he he will not. It's also not his job and his mission. And it, 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 it you can com compare the Naburians and Anunnakians with the gods of the Olymp. Zeus and his people, they played tricks. You know the story of, of, of Zeus, you know, not meaning that he's a bad one, but he wanted to have his women, so he disguised himself as different people, just had to have them. That's in Greek mythology. That's extraterrestrials playing tricks with us. We got to get out of this trickery. Mm. Our sovereignty as original paradise sons and daughters from the original construct 500 million years ago. Linda Moulton Howe said 300 million years ago, that conflict is older even. Mm. So I believe when you check the Bhagavad Gita, Mahabharata, and uh, other text and apocryphic knowledge, there is a storyline. You know, say the, they say the breath of Brahma is 400 million years. You know, think about how all of this correlates. Compare those books, find where the data kind of correlates. We've been fully developed humans millions of years ago. But they tell you in school with pre-human, all that stuff, that's not true. But yeah, yeah there are planets with primitive humans. I have done uh, um, a, 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 an inspirational friend named Travis Walton. I don't know if you know the name. Mm -hmm. Abductee, phenomenal case. He said, Ra, why don't you do a DNA test with 23andMe? Mm -hmm. And I did that. And first, do, do uh, contact on ships and uh, shamanic experience, I realized I was a Neanderthal with an Arcturian soul. Interesting. Really? I wasn't a human. And I wasn't this. I was a different being. Bigger brain. Telepathic, I realized. Mm. Smarter. Mm. Not grunting, primitive, but the way that being lived, what we have now in their life wasn't required wasn't required for that evolution of consciousness and lord and behold when i did my dna test i realized in the in the construct of this vessel i'm two percent neanderthal isn't that amazing yeah so is my partner and i'm not surprised so, i mean so, everything for him is here yeah so wow it's so that's so interesting so we, we, we've been certain species as cer certain entities coming here exploring the planet having to expand refine and amplify consciousness yeah. So, so what things, about yeah. other dimensions? I know you talk about biohacking other dimensions, seeing other yeah. dimensions. And I want yes. to talk about that because I don't know that. I haven't experienced that. And I was wondering, do you, and maybe you haven't done this, but I haven't either. At least I've heard about DMT. And yeah. when people do DMT, they just flip into a completely different dimension, universe, whatever yes. that is. Yeah. So is that what it's like to see other dimensions? Yeah, it has to and do with the, the level of what your pineal gland produces, which is actually the eye of Ra or mm -hmm. the eye of Horus. Is mm -hmm. when, you, when they, they show the schematics, the cut through the brain, you see the eye of Ra or the eye of Horus is the pineal gland. But the, the entire system basically has the pineal gland and the ganglia that sits on top of it. That entire organ is the access to other dimensions. Oof. When you and have you've that, been there. You've, have you shot into other dimensions I, before? I shoot, I shoot in and out. I wake up in other lives. Oh, okay. Interesting. And I know it's like different game settings. You know, when you, I don't know, I, I still like to play my games. And you load an avatar. And let's say I haven't played a certain game where I'm this elven lord. And I have to help my crew. We have to find this holy gem. So it's been months since I've played that. That's how this is with dimension. So when I go back, I'm going, uh, okay, remember my settings, mm -hmm. my gifts, my strength, my power, my wisdom, everything that I have built as a character. It, it's the same thing applies to you. Mm -hmm. Everything that you are, and if you have explored and your consciousness has perceived, these are your game settings. These are your presets, which are subject to you uh, building them, depending on what you subscribing to. So when you when I go back there, I have to basically remember who I was back then, 
and then activate it and then actively go into that realm and explore and do my job. And then when I come wow. back, this disappears, like you said, like a dream, it fades mm -hmm. out and you're back into this life. Yeah, I was uh, sharing this with Rob before we started that um, I was in Italy for three yeah. weeks and two yeah. of those weeks was with an ashram with a Swami really powerful healing work and he's beautiful the swami because he talks about ufos all the time he has contact i just know the nature of the work that went there was paradigm shifting and since i've been back which is since january 9th on my sleep i am waking up and it's i'm clearly visiting other places uh, i'm tired when i come back not exhausted but i'm tired <laughs> But it's, you worked. Yeah. And it's been powerful. The experiences, the relationships, the things I'm doing. And and this is really new for me. I'm I'm by the way, I'm open to all of this. None of this is scary to me. I'm just, I trust that I am guided and protected by benevolent light beings all the time. And everything, everyone who comes to me, it is of the light for the light. So I feel very safe in this. And yeah, I, and I, I, if there are people, sorry, please. Yeah. So basically I tell people this because people channel so many beings, make sure you are connected to your oversoul, mm -hmm. you know, understand what your higher self is to you. That is your guide. That is the guide. Everything else is kind of like a sub sub mediary between that and serving that, but make sure that you're in contact with you. As the Hicks always says, like, if you're not in agreement with you, it won't work. So in a sense, as the Higgs says, first of all, you have to be in the vortex. That means be in your heart. Like the galaxy behind you and the, the, the glowing light, the center is where your heart is. That is your vortex. And that is where you make contact with your oversoul. And in that is where you are you. There's nothing added, influenced, taken away or manipulated. That just is where you exist. And this is what people have to learn first to get out of all of these foreign suggestions, what's what I'm trying to find, you know. You know, some people... Pray to God and he never comes. Yeah, because what do you, what, what are you, what, who are you a, a prey to? Praying. Whose prey are you? Worship yourself. Cherish yourself. Honor yourself. Make your house a sanctuary, not a dwelling place. This is serious because we used to be that. All of us. And understand the glory of your existence here. Why you're on this planet and why we run around, you see social media with we labeling so many things, but no, no, you know what, what no, no, nobody can get away with all the fancy schmancy and all, all, all the trends and sideways and this ways and whatever ways they're into you exist. You perceive you're here, you're a sentient being. And that is who I always relate to when people say, but how do you talk, talk to you talk to and they said that you talk to male, female, they, them, they, or I, I said, I, everybody can design however they want to design it. I'm talking to a sentient being mm -hmm. that is eternal. Yeah. That is here. And like Dam Damien Brinkman said, said that, I hope I can repeat this. You are, you, anybody that I talk to is, I say, you are a being of purpose and a sense of direction. Always. And you're doing the best you can to put it all together. So I'm glad when we have this conversation. Yeah. Want information like what you have yes. about their ET heritage. I can tell you I had um the amazing Debbie Solaris before she stopped doing it, gave me a galactic reading, which was, oh my gosh, brilliant, made so much sense. Um, and I have tremendous Liren inside of me as well. Uh -huh. um, also Elohim and Andromeda, and I could go on and on. How can we access our ET heritage? Because this is really fascinating information for people about our family, but also about who we be right now and why we're being this way, why we're interested in what we're interested in. So I'll give you a parable because... We're not all clear on this planet. I say, when in Willy Wonka's factory, taste the, <laughs> taste the sweets, taste the medicine. It's the only way. Sober, impossible. Some people say that, but I've tested people or, and Akashic readers. If you have no plant experience, you have no plant experience. Why? The plants are the gatekeepers. 
The original jungle medicine deems you worthy or not with what knowledge you receive. You have to really, trust me, like I did ayahuasca, they strip you. They oh yeah, I've been you. there many yeah, times. Like, like I was floored like, talking about, when people talk about oh, I'm ego less, like part, part of the ego you need is how is your ego divine? It's the question. Because ego means nothing but energy guided outward. Hmm. We built that way. When I speak, I use ego. I don't have to. Egoless is it's an extreme that is actually non-existent. Hmm. You need to bring energy here to be here. That's how it is. If you use it wrong, that that would be edging God out. Right. And you're limiting yourself. So with everything, balance in the systems that are given to you. you know? Did you, so you liked doing ayahuasca? Yeah. I mean, my ego was like, what have you done? <laughs> Why did you bring me here? We're dying. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's, but I needed that. Not for the faint of heart. Yeah. It, you have to really have your stuff together. Like, uh, And I did it three times. And then I was told that I don't have to return, that she's always with me. You know, some mm -hmm. people, I mean, I don't know, like Graham Hancock does like 80 times. I think that's a little overboard. I think really, really, and shamans, all, you know, shake their head. And there's, there's, there's levels for how you deal with medicine where it's, you know, we're done now, you know? Yeah. It's, 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 there, there are levels where you want to kill yeah. yourself, you know? No, 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 no. no. And there you can really, be done and it can revisit. I've had that happen. I drank 25 times. I was like, you know, I'm great. That was beautiful. And then I was... Just, you know, for a year and a half, went about my business. I started studying shamanism and be, going to shaman school. And the medicine came and tapped me and said, while you're in school, we want you to come sit with us. And I'm like, oh, okay, here yeah. we go. Yeah, that's different. <clears throat> Not to go there and get knowledge, get knowledge, get knowledge. Now you have to become that. See, I'm, I did a reading with uh, Lavendar when she was active on starseedhotline.com. And she said, I'm a galactic shaman because I've been a, a regular oh, shaman in, in uh, over seven lifetimes. So that. I'm on a galactic level with shamanism. So I I really respect the architecture of that was, was left for us to find our way back home. Yeah, Starseed Hotline, they also tell you your star lineage and whatnot. That's also a simple way to find out your star lineage. If I'm, I might do a, a, a course on YouTube, I'm working on it, it's a little complex. If you want to see what star systems you're related to, um, you go to uh, astro.com. And when you do your star chart, you add additional objects. And in additional objects, you have to be witty to find that. It's not an easy task. Then you add all the planets that you know, like Rigel, Regulus. Um, I think Lyra is, is Vega. And the Pleiades is Maya. And Arcturus and Sirius and Alpha Draconis, um, Zeta Reticuli, add all of those planets that you know into additional objects. And then print out your chart. And where the most, where you have the most planets, that's most likely your galactic heritage. So I know I'm Arcturian, crystal clear. I have like four planets in. North Node, you know how this goes. Yeah. Aries, 41 degrees, Arcturus, Arcturus, Arcturus. I'm Arcturian. So I have, you can print that out physically. You know when people scan that and they want to be Pleiadian, but maybe, sweetie, you're Asasani. You're, you, 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 <laughs> you're not Pleiadian, you know? Like, you know, people want to want to be certain star system for, systems for trend. Some are also Draconian, here to heal the genealogy of the alpha fall of Alpha Draconis. Mm. It doesn't mean they're bad. Uh, some some are Anunnakian. You know, they have come back from the fall from that order as an incarnate to heal the conflict that they that they have caused when, when they were in Anunnakian form. Are also, the Anunnaki still alive? Yeah, they are. Many reincarnates are on Earth also. We have but where do they live? I think on Nibiru and other star systems. Okay. All right. And what about the I mean, uh for those of us who have been Liren. I yeah. mean, our planets were destroyed by the draconian folk. And so what, do they still live except inside of us? Or are there still Lyran beings? Well, I, the, the, the entire galaxy, they all all these races are still there. We are the ones who have to wake up to the fact that it is so. It's a you soup. Know? Yeah, it's, 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 it's a soup. I mean, imagine in the ancient days, um, my grandma grew, grew up 
where they just learned that people living in the jungle. In the 1800s, where they assumed nobody lives in the jungle. Everybody lives in where the civilized so-called European cities are. Wow. When somebody came back saying, yo, I found people in the jungle with temple structures and riches and whatnot. They're like, what? So now we are the primitives cosmically having to realize we have neighbors. This is an active galaxy and Earth is the only one that's kind of a little bit in the, in the backwater here, not knowing there are, and there's interstellar commerce, all of this is going on. We're just not having the conscious developed yet to see that. When you speak about your grandmother and yes. the forest and all of that, I know one of the things you like to do is track ancient civilizations through time. How have you discovered to track ancient civilizations? Yeah, that is interesting that you found that out. That means you found one of my channelings with Lincoln, I think. Because I asked Lincoln a very, very powerful channel. Um, I think uh, highself.com or something. I said, okay, let's go to the Giza Plateau. Let's go back 50,000 years linear timeline from here. And I let him remote view. With all these remote viewers, I'm like, you're, you're remote viewing targets that are unimportant. They don't educate. Like, you know, to me, it may sound cocky, but it's useless to me if you find a military base somewhere in another dimension where people work not really for you. That doesn't educate me. I want to see what educates me. You know, like saying, oh, uh, Nixon signed the papers to have Marilyn Monroe killed. Well, that's not here. That's not now. That's not beneficial. And the millennials, who's Marilyn Monroe? I know. Oh, yeah, so that's not working. So look at working modalities. So I'm looking at, okay, what did Egypt or what we call Egypt looked like around that time. Confirmed my stuff. He said pyramids had golden tops and golden auras, crystalline um, pyramid tops, like the tip, clear quartz, like light beams going out of them. People would live around the pyramids, not in the pyramids. You know, people sleep under the pyramid. That's mm -hmm. not recommended. There's this professor, Dr. Sokolov, who kind of measured that it's beneficial to live near it or uh, meditate next to it. The beneficial energy is in what that what that prism actually projects in the outer field. To go inside, it was it's actually for their stargates, other dimensional travel, cellular repair, highly accelerated, and deep, 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 deep subconscious travel, uh, pituitary gland activation. And that only works in the unfinished chamber. A lot of pyram pyramidians don't know that because they're so stuck in their pyramidiology. So you got to really get out and to look at what works, go there, make the experience, make contact, use psychics mm -hmm. to get an impression and then confirm data. So where was I? With so this? pyramids, so there's also vortices, there's power yes. spots, there's yeah. fountains and holy places. Yes. There's places that have had miraculous properties. So basically that's what in my... Uh, healing technology that I'm actually bringing to the planet is I had to figure out what are these holy places having in common? Not knowing that was my job assignment, but they like, look at Egypt. So I went to Egypt, you know, look, look at Hawaii, uh, look at Mount Shasta, look at Sedona and compare the data of what you're finding, why these places are so rejuvenating, mm. rehabilitating. What is it that they have in common? And I found highly magnetic anomalous fields uh, a large distribution of photons oh, and yeah. and negative ions. Same thing at the well of Lourdes in France. Highly ionized water. Holy water is not holy because the Pope says so or the church. They just jumped on the bandwagon. You know, you know they're selling that water. <laughs> they bought they bottle that stuff. Holy water is holy water because it's highly, highly ionized, which is super healing for the cell. Negative ions. It's a whole chapter that people should check with Wikipedia. But um, not always Wikipedia. Any data you find, I have to say Wikipedia is partially infiltrated by skeptics that rip, rip everything other than what the consensus believes in apart and give no chance for science. I've seen that. And I've seen a show where skeptics, uh, people like government, uh, a job sanctioned, People sit there to shred people that come with actually miraculous evidence of healing 
and and nature and observation by trying to make it pseudoscience or fringe. Well, we pass the fringe. I have stuff where I have physical data. Stuff's all measurable. So basically, these holy places combine healing aspects of negative ions, which is very, very important for the metabolism of your cell and cell rejuvenation and cell repair and DNA repair. RNA, DNA. Mm -hmm. um, photons is the highest communication level that your cells have in the body. Before you eat food, you eat light. Food mm -hmm. is broken down into light. What we are, what's coming out of us is debris of what is not lit anymore. You know, process of elimination. And we eat because we are light deficient. When our light absorbance capacity is energetically reached in the plasma body in Egypt, you see this symbol, is the Ka. When that's established, well, you heard those fairy tales of those people like Merlin and Archimedes that eat a little bit of date or like some, some grapes while the, uh, the kings and queens were feasting on everything that's on the table and they didn't require that. And they, they didn't look skinny. They weren't starving. Well, because they had their plasma body in order. So interesting. I <clears throat> And I know you're into photons, Ra, and I yes. want to follow this line of yeah. what you're talking about. So let's just give the audience a little, um, we'll pull back the curtain a little bit and then you'll get into it. So a photon basically yeah. is this yeah. tiny particle. It comprises waves of electromagnetic radiation. Yes. And photons are electric fields that are traveling through space. They yes. don't have charge. They don't have resting mass, yes. but they travel at the speed of light. Yes. So regarding the brain and photons and regarding the brain and its neuroplasticity, when the photons are communicating amongst the cells, how does that work? How can we heal? How can we optimize? So that's healing on the highest level with all healing modalities known to men. To me, is the optimum is if you are in a light field that is designed to bring you out of a field that is less divine. And most of us living in undivine neighborhoods or big cities, you know, electricity is not holy. The way water comes to us, all of this is not blessed. You need, we need to, like, I, I activate the water comes to my house. I activate the electricity coming to my house to make sure the blessed, the blessed, dimension is maintained so healing takes place this this way and i do this in my speeches and i explain that cells communicate with light and when the light communication is you can say 100 percent, we don't know how many photons back and forth the cells shooting or shooting through or transcending then the cell has the capacity and this has been scientifically proven to send 100,000 biochemical impulses back and forth within seconds. And when these 100,000 impulses are shot back and forth, you're healthy. So this ease begins when the light levels in you drop and this information drops and you no longer have 100,000 impulses and the, the impulsivity, whatever you want to call it, drops, just making up words, and the electricity drops, your ATP drops, and you're susceptible to disease. And that's all the stuff that bothers us. Hmm. And I'm about how do I harness natural energy? Yes, please. To bring that back to the body so the body can remember its own balance and then yeah. learn to hold it. Because we're all weak. We're like infants here. Yeah. You know, we go to airports, we're stressed. But that's why, I'm, you know, I make pendants like these, you know, to bring the particular energy back to the heart and the pendant is based on a jet jet means uh consciousness raising of the consciousness and the priests back then knew that you have to master the four templates which is the three dimension and the, uh, the astral realm or the thought realm fourth dimension and when you have mastered fourth dimension four dimensions all mastered you can hold five so the option is always there however earth transcends you, you can do that i mean it wasn't the story of Sai Baba, who made a temple appear in the mountains. Well, that dude was fifth, the fifth dimensional. That's where you can replicate basically anything, create anything because you have the energy and conscious level of consciousness to traverse through time and space. You can incarnate or not, be disembodied, be an uncorporal being at will with full memory, total recall of all your lives, all, all accessible at the speed of need. And 
we will eventually reach that stage, all of us. So mm. I have to assist people to get into these energy spectrums so Total Recall can kick back in. I had a guy who was a skeptic, and I said, just wear this key. And, and, and he was at the conference in LA, and I said, come back tomorrow. He comes back and he's like, I, I was in Egypt, bro. I saw the temple. I was in a priesthood. What's what's with this key? So I said, this is because of the information and light levels are connected to where you're from. You will remember. It's not magic. It's science. All the magic we call magic, all the occult is all science. Hmm. Once you know how to apply it, it works. You know, uh, Norman Doidge, I'm sure you know his name. He was a really famous psychiatrist and author, suggested that the brain <clears throat> is the most intricate structure in the entire universe. Yes. And Doidge said, there's a quote from him that says, the brain is the most complex structure in the universe, everything having to do with human training and education has to be re-examined in light of neuroplasticity. So when you talk about this is the most powerful thing we have, yes. this is the way to health, this is the way to longevity, yes. is there a practice that you do that we could start to do to start to bring these photons more healthy and online, the light inside of us more healthy online and firing the way it should? Well, one thing I practice is leave yourself open like a child. Mm -hmm. Everything is interesting. Everything is exciting. The toddlers have that. And then we lose it when, you know, mommy tells you, don't, you don't play with Peter anymore. You, you, you play with this guy. You know, when the structure comes in the family, uh, you can watch your plate, nobody touched your food. All of this egoic teaching comes in, we lose it. Bring the child back. Everything is interesting. Any show, anything fantastic, anything that excites you should fire the mind. Leave yourself open to the things possible beyond your wildest dreams. And I always leave myself open to, let's see what happens, you know. Even uh, in, in, in my life, I always said, uh, uh, and I saw when I, I think when I saw Joey Dispenza in What the Bleep Do We Know? When I wake up, I have the awareness that let the universe surprise me with what I need, not what I want. I like that. That's wonderful. Yeah. We all have wants and desires <clears throat> and whatnot. You're in a desire body. It's a desire realm. There's nothing wrong with desiring things. Have fun with it. Enjoy it. Go, 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 go all the way into it. But let the universe deliver to you what you need. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. will give you the inner standing of it will deliver to you. See, we have the law of attraction. Then Bob Proctor says law of vibration. I always would say it's like the law of vibration, but it's also the universe is a blueprint or like with happenings around you of who you are. So everything that you find, even people that find me on your show or they find me interesting, that's who they, that's who they are. That's how we are part of each other. Even even the skeptic that goes like, yeah, I don't know this guy. Da, da, da. You know, we are all part of the source mechanism of having to reflect on who we are. And there's no escape from that with everything there is. That's why Zen Buddhists try to practice neutrality, to not even react to anything, you know. But I Well, say you brought up dreams, so I'm going to riff on that. Yeah. So Arcturus Ra, this is Dare to Dream. What do you next dare to dream? What are your future dreams and goals? I dare to dream to build actually a dimensional portal where you can make conscious contact and come back with memories. And I want to build a sanctuary that has a landing platform for when we're ready to scout craft can land and physical form contact can take place because they're ready. It's kind of like Noah's Ark, build it and they will come. But this time we don't need the flood for that. We are here, we have learned. We did this many, many times. So I want to build a Starseed Airport where people can come and witness the awe of higher dimensional aspect taking place and affirming that, meaning like the landing platform is not like just some metal plaque, like where helicopters land. 
the ground filled with magnetite, crystalline array, uh, all aligned to a holy geometry, an octagonal platform set up that emanates light on a 23 dimensional level, so high that you could see it with a, a satellite emanating as in highest light. And that's attractive for the Royal Galactics to come here. Now I say there's a difference between the Royal ships and those that are suspicious. The ships that give you the creeps and um, leave burnt marks in the field and shits off and people cry, stay away from those. The ships that are multidimensional, crystalline, see-through, that make the grass grow, kids come, animals, everything harmonizes. They leave no residue but enhanced life when they leave for mm -hmm. years. Trust mm -hmm. them. Wow. These are, these are our people. That's very discerning. I've never heard that before. Yeah, there's a difference. There are government mm -hmm. craft that don't work in your interest. They have spectacular technology. They can cloak, but they'll give you the creeps. And they make animals unrest. So and you're going to be at the Conscious Life Expo coming yes, up. Absolutely. I can't wait to give you a hug in person. <laughs> That's February 9th through the 12th yes. in Los Angeles at the LAX Hilton Hotel. Yes. And folks who are interested in seeing you, hearing you, and experiencing a day or the full four days, I will have a link in the show notes so you can click to get your tickets. What are you talking about this year? Basically, um, what we talked about and my technology, I'm still working on it. I don't know if I hack it, but maybe I'll talk about it, but like a little bit of AI. You know, as I, I believe that we can use AI to psychically channel and conceptualize where we are. I told you before the show started, it's like, ask AI to show you Egypt before it fell. What it would look like now. And you, your mind would be blown. Ask AI to show you Atlantis as it has never fallen. And you'll be amazed what AI will show you. Uh, reconstitute temple structures like Gobekli Tepe. L look at it and then say... This was in that constellation of the North Star. This was 13,000 years ago. Can you rebuild this construct, what it might have looked like around that time? And AI will rebuild and reconstitute the temple. In a way where you go, what is going on? So here's what AI is doing. We have all the knowledge. The entire human race knows everything. But we have not connected everything. Now AI connects what we know. And mm. that makes it psychic. I love this conversation so much. I know there's lots of people afraid of AI. Once again, for me, benevolent of the light, I have been using it. I'm not having problems. I'm loving it. I love what you just shared. I just feel like there's tremendous possibilities. And for creators, musically, artistically, and so forth, it's beautiful. Entrepreneurs, I could also speak about it. Thank you so much yeah. for some of those keys of what we can do. Yeah. And so we will see you in February, Conscious Life Expo. Ra, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I've really enjoyed this. Thank you so much. Yeah. Anytime. It's a pleasure. And folks, if you want to learn more, go to ra-key.com. It's ra-key.com. And I end today's show with this quote from Andrew Weil. Among other things, neuroplasticity means that emotions such as happiness and compassion can be cultivated in much the same way that a person can learn through repetition to play golf and basketball or master a musical instrument. And that such practice changes the activity and physical, physical aspect of specific brain areas. Thank you so much for joining us today on Dare to Dream. Remember, if you're listening to us on podcast and you like to check us out, head over to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. Also on Spotify, you'll find the videos. This is your number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Next week on the show, I'm going to be featuring, actually tomorrow, I'm doing so many shows I'm losing track, but actually tomorrow we're going live again. Hurrah with the mystic Dr. Greta 
Chamberlain. She's a remote energy transformational specialist. She channels the non-physical entities known as the realm of beings. And Dr. Greta works internationally. Her channeling explains the creation of reality within the context of existence and how we manage the energy force within us. Remember to subscribe to the channel for more amazing conversations. And much as Ra said, you can choose. There's a lot of choice in here. How we respond galactically to our health, to our food, to everything we do. So be sure to be of the light and to only invite in the light. You are here to be as magnificent as you truly are.